All right, our next presenters, John Childs and Riley Lee. Um, John Childs is a registered geologist and, and with Childs Geoscience Incorporated. He's the founder and president. It's a diverse mineral exploration group with underground and open pit expertise. He's a registered geologist with over 40 years of experience in exploration, property evaluation for metals, industrial minerals, and gemstones. His management experience in project generation in the Americas, Europe, and Asia has contributed to the discovery of significant precious metal and industrial mineral resources. Responsibilities have included all aspects of exploration and property evaluation, from regional reconnaissance to resource estimation. He's got a strong background in permitting and community outreach, and he has a PhD from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Riley is an ambitious early career geologist pursuing experience in the mining and exploration industry. Riley graduated with a bachelor's degree from, in geology from MS, MSU in 2021, and has since worked for NR Gold LLC and Child's Geoscience. Since entering the industry, he's focused on exploring and developing base metals, industrial minerals, and critical minerals. They're going to give us an update today on the ruby graphite project, so please welcome them. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't doesn't have the. Well, we just want to thank the conference organizers for the opportunity to update the progress on the ruby graphite deposit. Um, this presentation is an update of an earlier presentation on the history of the ruby graphite project presented last year at the Mine Design Conference by Greg Bell. Uh, the slide on the screen is a view looking uh, west at the area where we drilled 4,000 meters of core in 2023. Uh, the groundhog <coughs> underground workings uh, are on the left skyline and our drill pads are in the center of the photo under the hill. Uh, this is very much a progress report. It's an ongoing project. We're putting together pieces of the puzzle both geologically and from an engineering standpoint on this project. Our presentation uh, includes forward-looking statements, so be forewarned. Uh, this location map shows Dillon, Montana in the upper left uh, and the Ruby Graphite Project about 15 miles to the southeast in the southern Ruby Range. Uh, just some overview on the history of the project. Uh, from 2000, uh, the, uh, the graphite was first produced in 1887, so it's a really old project. Um, the crystal graphite is synonymous with the groundhog mine. Um, graphite was mined from uh, 1901 to 1919. Uh, the mine was revamped in the 1940s with the installation of a flotation circuit. Uh, they pro processed existing uh, ore piles uh, as well as underground mine, uh, material. Uh, there's more than 3,500 feet of underground workings at the, at the mine, uh, and more than 2,400 tons of very high-quality graphite were produced and sold at estimated grades ranging from 14 to, to, 20 per, to 27 percent graphite. Uh, in 1950, the USGS published very good geologic maps uh, of the underground workings, and we've relied on, uh, quite a bit on those. The workings are presently uh, uh, inaccessible. In 2016, this is a recent history of the project. Um, we've, we've been there just one summer. Uh, in 2016 to 2022, Greg Bell um, and Ruby Graphite consolidated the land position and conducted quality testing that's confirmed the high quality of the graphite. 
Ethos Geological did preliminary geologic work. In September 2022, Reflex Advanced Materials Corporation executed an option to acquire 100% of the property from Ruby Graphite. And they became the uh, project operator with Child's Geoscience Inc. providing technical and geological support. The property includes 101 uh, acres of patented ground with additional unpatented load, load mining claims. Uh, a little bit about the quality of the material. Um, purities of 99.999% graphitic carbon have been obtained from recent preliminary uh, metallurgical studies testing the purification of the graphite material sourced from the Ruby Graphite project. This purity was achieved solely using a conventional thermal purification process, indicating that commercial scale uh, purification costs will be significantly lower because only th basic thermal purification tactics would be employed. Uh, lower image there is uh, electron SEM in, uh, image uh, of, the, of the ore. Just a little bit on the uses of graphite and its national importance. Um, flake graphite's a major component of lithium ion batteries. And graphite has been de declared a critical mineral essential, essential to national security. High-grade high veins at the Groundhog Mine were hand-mined in the past, and drilling in 2023 has defined significant intervals of both vein graphite and disseminated uh, flake graphite uh, for about 250 meters east of the mine. Uh, A little bit about global distribution. Uh, this is uh, an old story now, but China is the major producer in the world. Uh, other, other production comes from uh, Madagascar, uh, Mozambique, and Brazil. So no domestic production. A little bit about our exploration approach. We're evaluating the existing ore body uh, and its extensions through drilling. But we're also interested in exploring for uh, similar deposits, uh, both in the area and elsewhere. And we're using stacked exploration methods to better our chances of success. And this includes initial literature review, a lot of geologic mapping, airborne and ground geophysics, soil and lithologic geochemistry, structural analysis, computer-assisted geologic modeling, uh, and other tools we brought to bear through Montana Tech and Chris, Chris Gammons is uh, stable isotopes, Raman spectroscopy, uh, petrography, fluid inclusions, and scanning electron microscopy. This is just an overview of the regional geology. Um, the Dillon uh, block of the Wyoming craton is shown in yellow. Um, uplifts are shown in red. Uh, the location of the Ruby Graphite Mine Project is shown in the southern Ruby Range uh, in a white circle. Uh, and graphite is hosted in Archean marble, quartzal feldspathic and biotite gneisses, calc silicate gneiss, schists, and pegmatite. So typical Archean rocks that extend well through the Ruby Range and throughout southwestern Montana. I'm focusing on the project geology. Um, the mine area was previously thought to be in the uh, fold hinge, an isoclinal fold hinge, but it, we, we, we now think that uh, it's uh, uh, where marble is transitioning westward, uh, where the marble is, is fingering out uh, into a series of calc silicate layers that are altered to both prograde and retrograde scarn. And that, the scarn was a surprise. We, we weren't expecting that. So there's pieces of this puzzle that we're still, that we're still putting together. 
So in this image, uh, Archean marble is shown in blue. Biotite and other gneisses and schists are shown in various phases of brown. Amphibolite is shown in purple. Uh, and there's a complex pattern of refolded folds uh, that, that make um, prospecting di difficult. Uh, there are northwest trending diabase dikes shown in red and faults, some of which are occupied by, by dikes shown in black. The outlined area in black there in the center of the slide <coughs> is the area uh, of the next, uh, the next slide. Detailed geology of the mine area. Uh, marble again is shown in blue and it uh, transitions westward uh, past the, the, the diabase dike shown in red um, into calcilicate rocks. Uh, the compositional layering and the main foliation are not shown here, but everything is dipping to the north, northwest at 40, 40 to 45 degrees, uh, except in the immediate mine area. And we've only been able to work at surface so far. But in the, in the mine area, the layering uh, typically varies around north-south uh, with steep dips. So there's something different going on in the mine area. We've been un unable to get underground yet. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a structural difference here. The groundhog mine workings are shown in green near the west edge of the slide. Uh, and also in green are masses of biotite diopside gneiss that are unique to the mine area. We're not seeing that rock type elsewhere. Um, note the abundance of pegmatite bodies shown in pink. And, and these are prominent hosts for the, uh, for the graphite, which is a bit of an enigma. There's very little uh, carbon in, in these pegmatites. The 2023 drill pads are shown on the northern part of the, the slide uh, as lettered boxes. And they extend from the mine area northeastward to the eastern edge uh, of the map. Graphite intercepts were encountered in, in all of the drill holes, all 24 drill holes that we drilled in 2024. This is a representative drill cross section. Um, this is from the 2023 drilling, and that's the only drilling that's ever been done on, on the project to our knowledge. Uh, mineralization is shown in red, marble and blue again, pink, pegmatite and pink, various biotite and quartzofeldspathic gneisses in green. Note the concentration of graphite in and near fault zones shown in gray uh, at shallow depths and with additional graphite intercepts at depths up to 180 meters. So the graphite, the most prominent graphite, is near the top of those drill holes shown in red, and they're associated with fault zones. Structural analysis. Um, we've, we've taken a lot of surface structure. Won't, won't go into, into that right now, but really important structural patterns have emerged from um, basically replotting uh, the veins and faults present in the old USGS maps from 1950, and they're, and they're really excellent maps. They've also done uh, some um, channel samples, 32 channel samples, and that data is available to us. Uh, this slide shows lower hemisphere stereonets displaying faults on the left and veins on the right that we compiled from maps uh, by the USGS. Uh, note that most of the veins dip steeply to moderately to the southeast, uh, shown in the, in the right diagram there. Uh, this is in contrast to the vein envelopes, or envelope for the inferred ore body, uh, explored by the mine stopes that dip steeply to the north. So that's, that's a difference. The veins are dipping south within envelopes uh, that, that appear to dip steeply to the north. A further complication is that the 2023 drilling east of the mine indicates that the mineralized zones dip about 40 degrees to the northwest, approximately parallel 
to the foliation and compositional layering in the uh, metamorphic host rocks. So there's a big difference between what we think is going on in the mine and what we're seeing in the exploration drilling to the east. Should also note that there's no drilling at all to the west of the mine. This is just a northwest southeast cross section uh, through the groundhog mine. North is to the left uh, in this cross section, uh, fr again from the USGS work, showing near vertical mine stopes uh, near the top of the, of the image. Uh, and these dip uh, steeply to the north, and they transect all three mine, main mine levels. And so it suggests that the main veins or packages of veins uh, dipped very steeply to the north. Uh, the antelope crosscut is seen at the bottom of the slide, approximately 60 meters below the main groundhog mine workings. The lowest of the four graphite zones defined in the 2023 drilling uh, projects to the mineralization at the north end of the antelope crosscut. So it was a bit of an enigma. Uh, there was a crosscut going right under the, the main mine area from south to north, and there was spotty mineralization beneath the, uh, the workings, but the mineralization was very good at the, at the end of that tunnel. Uh, and we're, we're seeing uh, the, that the mineralization now defined by the 2023 drilling projects, one of the, the lowest layer projects to that mineralization in the old crosscut. So it's another piece of the puzzle that we're starting to get our heads around. This is uh, uh, an image showing the four zones of mineralization that we've defined in the 2023 drilling relative to the workings, which are shown on the left end of the diagram. Um, the slide shows these four zones extending east of the mine for about 250 meters um, that have been modeled for the 2023 drilling program using the micro mine mining software. The middle two zones shown in yellow and green uh, project into the groundhog mine workings shown on the left. The upper zone passes above the workings and the lower graphite zone projects strong mineralization found, projects to strong mineralization found in the antelope exploration crosscut 60 meters vertically below the main zone. This is just another view of the mineralized zones that we've defined. Um, and this mineralization extends as far as we've drilled, basically, uh, to the east of the mine. This slide shows a, a, a shape for uh, one of the main pegmatite bodies, mineralized pegmatites, that's uh, associated with the, the four uh, main mineralized zones uh, in the drilling. A couple of slides here just to show you what these rocks look like. Um, the slide on the left uh, is uh, an outcrop photo of the, of the uh, strong structural rotting lineation uh, in biotite calxilicate gneiss, where a stope from the upper level of the groundhog mine has broken to the ground surface. So very, very strong elongation in a, about a 40 degree north plunging uh, lineation. The photo on the right is just a hand sample of biotite gneiss showing biotite in a strong mineral lineation that extends from left to right across the photo. The interesting thing here is that the biotite is partially replaced by shiny graphite, indicating that the graphite forming event postdated development of the biotite foliation and the peak of regional metamorphism. Uh, the scale on the right is in centimeters. This is just some core from the 23 drilling. Uh, you can see vein graphite uh, up to several inches thick in zones uh, up to uh, several meters. And then in the lower part of the, the photo, there's disseminated flake graphite uh, disseminated throughout the rock. 
And, and uh, what, what we just showed in hand specimens present in the drill core as well, where the graphite uh, tends to replace iron-bearing minerals. In this case, uh, biotite also replaces garnet. Uh, and it does so in, in the pegmatites as well. Uh, this shows carbon isotope data from Duke 1990 on the right and from Chris Gammon's uh, ongoing work on the left. The new results are remarkably similar to the old data and suggest that if the graphite is organic in origin, it has been strongly altered during regional metamorphism. The following slides will present uh, some of the results of research on the graphite deposits by Chris Gammons at uh, at the University uh, at Montana Tech. So spectacular patterns of uh, flake graphite and clusters. Uh, you see this in hand specimen uh, as well. Cross fiber arrangement of, uh, of uh, graphite flakes or blades uh, in veins, perpendicular to the, the walls of the veins suggesting open space filling. Um, on the right, there are replacement textures uh, with a lot of graphite involved uh, with uh, minerals like clinozoocyte, tremolite, actinolite. And interesting, interestingly, uh, prenite and pompeliite. Uh, uh, and this slide and the following uh, ele scanning electron microscope images made by Chris Gammon at, Gammons at Montana Tech showing development of the graphite and pompeliite in replacement textures after higher grade diopside SCARN assemblages. Again, the SCARN was a surprise. Note the intricate intergrowths of the black graphite and other alteration minerals and the detailed replacement patterns of uh, earlier formed SCARN minerals. In the SEM image on the left, albite and clinozoocyte uh, make up the middle of the image with graphite in the upper right, interfingering with the, with the other alteration minerals. Um, these are likely replacing clinopyroxene as seen in the lower left. In the photomicrograph on the right, in plain polarized light, uh, biotite is partially replaced by graphite and pompeliite. Another view of graphite and pompeliite uh, occurring uh, intimately associated in a quartz plagioclase matrix uh, shown in plain polarized light on the left and cross polars on the right. These uh, scanning electron microscope images show that, the, uh, uh, that, that there are small grains of uh, minerals like scheelite, uh, tungsten bearing mineral, galena, lead-bearing mineral, uh, and pyrotite, uh, uh, iron mineral, uh, that are present in this altera alteration package. The idea here is that these minerals are important because they're, they're not of ore grade. They're, they're very minor components, but they do provide evidence of a geochemical footprint of the graphite deposits that's hopefully bigger than the graphite itself and may, may form an exploration uh, tool. Here's, whoop, go back one. Uh, so this is pyrotite on the left and nickel rich pyrotite on the right. So there is anomalous nickel as well in this alteration package. So what we've learned so far, still in progress, um, about the development of this uh, graphite deposit is that. Uh, uh, it's in region, regionally metamorphosed and fibrillite grade to granulite grade uh, metamorphic rocks that have been heated to about 800 degrees centigrade. And that event was followed by localized diopside Hedenberg uh, uh, prograde SCARN developed at approximately 400 to 500 degrees centigrade. And then this was followed by uh, graphite forming in retrograde SCARN uh, in the prenite pompeliite metamorphic facies at about 250 degrees. Uh, that, and that 
area in PT space is shown uh, in red in the lower part of the, uh, of the phase diagram here. So the model for the groundhog graphite is quite different uh, from those models for other graphite deposits, such as the graphite one uh, near Nome, Alaska. So upcoming work, work planned is uh, more geologic mapping, uh, possibly trenching, uh, drilling, 3D modeling, uh, assays uh, and uh, bulk samples. So we're excited about developing the first vein graphite mine in the United States in over 40 years in Dillon, Montana. And we've involved local environmental and construction contractors to ensure that we minimize, contact, minimize impacts to the land and water uh, and to our neighbors. Just acknowledgments of some of the folks and organizations that have been involved in the study, certainly Montana Tech, uh, Ruby Graphite, and Greg Bell, who put the property together originally, uh, Reflex Advanced Materials, who um, have an option to, uh, to obtain 100% of the project, uh, and then USGS folks who, who have visited the property and are conducting ongoing research and coordination with, with us and Chris Gammons. So thank you to everyone in attendance, Montana Tech, Reflex Advanced Materials, Ruby Graphite, and the staff of Child Geoscience. That's all I have. All right, thank you guys. Um, questions for John and Riley? What kind of processing is needed, and what, what's the mine waste story likely to, to shape up to be? Uh, typically flotation, uh, flotation circuits for the, for the graphite. Um, the stuff is, is really quite pure, other than the scattered sulfides that, that I've shown that are very mi minor uh, component. So it would be silicate minerals. Uh, in, in the host rocks that would, would need to be separated from, from the graphite. Pretty clean. Any additional questions for these guys? Right here. John, will you refresh my aging memory and tell me what Pompeliite is? <laughs> I know who he was, but what is the mineral? Yeah. It, it's a... Uh, um, the low-grade metamorphic uh, mineral, the sodium calcium. I can't quote you the, the the formula. You always put me on the spot. Deliberately. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any John, have you made any attempts to try to get it in, into, the, into the underground workings? Have you Yeah. We. To answer your question, no. There's, there's some real widow makers hanging right at the portal for the, uh, the antelope mine, the, 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 the lowest level. Uh, we could probably uh, clear those out. We haven't tried yet. Uh, we've concentrated on drilling and, and surface work so far, but it would really be good to get into those underground workings. So the antelope is the one that's probably most accessible, and it's the, it's the lower one with very little mineralization except at the very end. But the upper three levels, I think we can, we can get into. Um, we just haven't tried yet. They're all caved. Um, there's one stope uh, that's just spectacular uh, outcrops of, of the graphite itself. It's the best exposures. And those rise off the upper level, the, the Smith uh, mining level. And you may be able to get, get down the hole, but I, I haven't wiggled down there yet. Uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty small. <laughs> So I'm small, but not that small. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. We appreciate it.